the mysterious mighty hunter named Nimrod gets a brief mention after the flood in Genesis 6 through 9 as a great grandson of Noah, grandson of Ham, and whose uncle's names look coincidentally like nations rather than literal individuals seen in Genesis 10 verse 6. The sons of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, and Canaan. His mention as the first builder of the major centers in the known world from 2 millennia BC all the way down into the Hellenistic period. Genesis 10, 10 through 12. The first centers of his kingdom were Babylon, Baruch, Akkad, and Kalne, in Shinar. From that land he went to Assyria where he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Pala, and Rezin which is between Nineveh and Kala, which is the great city. This section in Israel's prehistory looks awfully similar to something reminiscent of the Sumerian Kings List that was written around the Old Babylonian period, 2000 to 1600 BCE. As both are lists of post-flood rulers of cities, and as we've seen in this series, Mesopotamia played an enormous role in the development of the Genesis creation stories. Adam and Eve, the Flood, and now the post-Flood Table of Nations, which includes the Tower of Babel, resembling a Babylonian ziggurat. Our purpose, as usual, is to hunt down mythical, legendary, or historical antecedents to biblical characters. In this case, with Nimrod, we have leading experts in the world wrestling over what his sources really are. If leading experts can't pin this guy down with certainty, we should take a humble pill and be cautious to do the same. When one thinks of Nimrod, one might think of a foolish or inept person in today's world. This derogatory usage most likely stems from the negative reputation given to this post-flood hero. As Professor David M. Carr notes in his Genesis 1-11 through exegetical commentary, This famed hunter helps him function well as a primeval figure that might originate a Mesopotamian ideal of kingship that prominently featured boasts about kings hunting prowess. To be sure, many have interpreted Nimrod's name as meaning we will rebel and seen that as an indicator that Nimrod is viewed negatively here. Nevertheless, the text itself, especially the part building on an audience's prior knowledge of the figure status as warrior of the hunt before Yahweh, does not seem to presuppose such a negative judgment. Instead, Nimrod stands as a warrior successor in Genesis 10.8 to the warriors of old mentioned in Genesis 6.4. While his famed statuses, a warrior of hunt before Yahweh, makes him contrast with Cain, who went from before Yahweh, Genesis 4.16. Here, meant to function as a positive superlative and contrast to Cain. It appears Nimrod has gone down in the hall of shame, when in fact he may have been understood by the Genesis authors to be a hero figure, contrasting Cain. Cain was the first person to build a city, but was obviously understood to be a murderer. Was he denigrated because he was a giant or titan in this mythical prehistory? This Sumerian king list documents insane lifetimes by ancient kings similar to the genealogies in Genesis 4, 5, and later 10. Adapa gets a shout out in that Sumerian king list, reminding anyone reading of Enoch ascending to heaven or has watched our previous episode on Enoch. Then Damuzid or Tammuz, later known as Ishtar, the consort of Inanna, gets a blurb for being a fisherman, which reminds me of the Oannes coming up from the sea, giving divination, etc. This Tammuz literally gets a month in the Hebrew calendar, which is derived from the Akkadian and Babylonian calendar. 
Continuing in this king's list, we get Gilgamesh soon after Demuzid. And we shouldn't be shocked if these god kings play a role in influencing much later biblical traditions such as that of Nimrod. Professor Peter McKinnist and the Anchor Bible Dictionary. Starting with the famous publication of the Anchor Bible Dictionary under Gilgamesh, we have a rather excellent summary of this biblical character by a Harvard expert, Peter McKinnist, Hancock Professor of Hebrew and Other Oriental Languages Emeritus. He states, Nimrod, the enigmatic figure mentioned briefly in Genesis 10 as a descendant of Noah, holds a compelling place in ancient texts. Described as a mighty hunter before the Lord and considered the original king of Babylon, Nimrod's inclusion in the genealogical list bears a striking resemblance to the Sumerian king's list from the old Babylonian period. Unraveling the identity of Nimrod has been a topic of much debate. Three main approaches have been explored. The first posits Nimrod as a god, such as the Mesopotamian Ninurta or Marduk. The second suggests Nimrod as a legendary Mesopotamian hero, potentially Gilgamesh or Lugalbanda, or even an eponym parallel to the Greek traditions of Ninos. The third approach seeks to identify Nimrod with the historical figures including Sargon of Agade, Tukulti Ninurta I of Assyria, or even Nazim Muratash an Egyptian pharaoh or an Aramean ruler named Ben Haddad. Deciphering among these various possibilities proves challenging. However, considering the Mesopotamian context of the Genesis text, it's more likely that Nimrod represents a legendary hero, eponym, or historical figure from Mesopotamia rather than a god. The Hebrew rendering of Nimrod may stem from a Hebrew corruption and denigrative reinterpretation of divine names like Ninurta or Marduk. One possible suggestion is that Nimrod is an abbreviation of a name formed with Ninurta or Marduk, similar to Tukulti Ninurta I. Upon closer examination, it becomes apparent that the biblical portrayal of Nimrod draws upon multiple Mesopotamian traditions, references to Babylon, Erech, Uruk, and Akkad, Agade, suggest ties to Babylonia. Nimrod's rule over Assyria reflects the long-standing cultural superiority of Babylonia over Assyria. This connection likely points to a period before 2000 BC, under the Agade, or Ur, three dynasties, or around 610 to 539 BC during the Neo-Babylonian Chaldean rule. Moreover, the association of Cush, Nimrod's father, with the Kassites, and the mention of Shinar, possibly reflecting Shanhara, a designation of Kassite Babylonia, indicates the utilization of Babylonian traditions originating in the later 2nd millennium BC. Assyria also plays a role in the biblical depiction of Nimrod, particularly the Neo-Assyrian period from the 9th to 7th centuries BC, when Assyria dominated Babylonia. This connection is evident in Micah's identification of the land of Nimrod with Assyria. The hunting motif associated with Nimrod aligns with well-known royal themes in Mesopotamian literature and art which gained prominence during the reigns of the Neo-Assyrian kings. The reference to Nineveh, Kalan, Rehoboth, and Resen in Genesis 10 can also be explained within a Neo-Assyrian context. While the diverse traditions surrounding Nimrod make it difficult to pinpoint one specific individual that he represents, it is clear that he functions as a legendary and composite eponym of Mesopotamia. Precision and historical references should not be expected. Similar to the Greek traditions Ninos, Nimrod becomes an eponymous hero founder of Assyria and its empire, drawing from composite backgrounds. Notably, in antiquity, Ninos was already equated with Nimrod. In post-biblical sources, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim, Nimrod remained a notable figure. 
His name became attached to various ancient Mesopotamian ruins, particularly Kala, as part of efforts to remember and elaborate on his hunting and military prowess. This depiction, however, often portrayed Nimrod negatively, depicting him as the greatest sinner since the Flood, claiming divinity and sponsoring the Tower of Babel. Some sources, however, offer a more positive view, highlighting his opposition to the construction of the Tower. The complexity surrounding Nimrod and his depiction in various ancient texts challenge us to explore the multifaceted nature of this legendary figure. Through the lens of history, mythology, and cultural interplay, we gain a deeper understanding of the profound influence and enduring legacy of Nimrod within Mesopotamian and biblical traditions. Ninurta and Nimrod, a tale of ancient gods. Let's explore the fascinating connection between Ninurta and Nimrod. Ninurta was a revered deity in ancient Mesopotamia, was associated with diverse domains such as farming, healing, hunting, law, scribes, and war. Initially worshipped as an agricultural and healing god, he later took on a warrior persona as Mesopotamia became more militarized while still retaining his agricultural attributes. As the son of Enlil, the chief god, Ninurta held great significance, and his main temple, Eshemiza in Nippur, was a revered center of worship. King Gudea of Lagash even rebuilt Ninurta's temple in Lagash, demonstrating his devotion. The Assyrians also held Ninurta in high regard, particularly as a formidable warrior. King Ashurnasirpal II built a grand temple for Ninurta in Kalhu, which became the deity's primary cult center. Many scholars believe that Ninurta served as the inspiration for the biblical figure Nimrod, mentioned in Genesis 10, 8 through 12, as a mighty hunter. While the exact transformation of the name Ninurta into Nimrod in Hebrew remains somewhat elusive, the two figures share similar functions and attributes, making Ninurta the most plausible etymology for Nimrod. Interestingly, the ruins of Kalhu eventually came to be known in Arabic as Namrud, due to their association with Ninurta. In later Old Testament accounts, specifically in 2 Kings 19.37 and Isaiah 37.38, King Sennacherib of Assyria is said to have been assassinated by his sons Adremelech and Sherezer in the temple of Nisroch, which is likely a scribal error for Nimrod. This presumed error arose from a spelling mistake during transcription, as the visual similarities between the letters could have led to confusion as no Assyrian deity by the name of Nisruk has been attested, scholars consider this explanation the most likely. If Nisruk indeed refers to Ninurta, then Sennacherib's murder likely occurred in Ninurta's temple in Kalhu. Although the book of Genesis portrays Nimrod favorably as the first post-flood king and builder of cities, the Greek Septuagint translation of the Hebrew Bible presents him as a giant and mistranslates the Hebrew phrase meaning before Yahweh as in opposition against God. Consequently, Nimrod became associated with idolatry, embodying the archetypal idolater. Could this be the origin of his demise as an infamous enemy of God in history? Early Jewish Midrash works, as described by the philosopher Philo in his Questiones, depict Nimrod as the instigator of the Tower of Babel and persecutor of the Jewish patriarch Abraham for his refusal to participate in the project. Saint Augustine of Hippo refers to Nimrod as a deceiver, oppressor, and destroyer of earthborn creatures in his book, The City of God. 
Imagine having your record tainted by a spelling mistake and simply being associated with Babylon. So forever in the historical record, you are cast in a negative light. The parallels between the Mesopotamian god Ninurta and Nimrod in Genesis are somewhat speculative, but several scholars think the connection is strong enough. Both are mighty warriors. Ninurta and Nimrod are associated with warrior-like qualities and prowess in battle. Ninurta is a powerful god of war and hunting in Mesopotamian mythology, while Nimrod is described as a mighty hunter in Genesis. Founder of Cities Ninurta is credited with the founding of several cities including Nippur, while Nimrod is associated with the founding of cities like Babylon and Erech Uruk, in the biblical narrative. Divine Lineage Ninurta is often considered the son of Enlil, one of the chief gods in the Mesopotamian pantheon. Similarly, Nimrod is described as a descendant of Ham, one of Noah's sons in Genesis. Post-Flood Era Both Ninurta and Nimrod are connected to the post-flood world. Ninurta's presence and worship continue in later periods, even after the destruction caused by the flood in Mesopotamian mythology. Nimrod too is depicted as a prominent figure in the post-flood generation in Genesis. Ninus in History Ninus, the legendary founder of Nineveh, the ancient capital of Assyria, remains an enigmatic figure. Greek historians of the Hellenistic period and beyond associate him with the city but his exact identity in Assyrian records remains uncertain. Some propose a link to the revered deity Ninurta. As we explore this historical puzzle, Ninus becomes a symbol of the enduring spirit that built civilizations and fueled our quest for knowledge. In the shadows of time, his story intertwines with myth and history, leaving us captivated by the mysteries of the past. Seems that Greek tradition as well as biblical tradition both have mythical figures who are kings that founded and built the great Mesopotamian cities, temples, towers, etc. Many early accomplishments are attributed to Ninus, such as training the first hunting dogs and taming horses for riding. Could this overlap with the mighty hunter Nimrod? The decipherment of a vast quantity of cuneiform texts has allowed modern Assyriologists to piece together a more accurate history of Sumer, Akkad, Babylonia, Assyria, and Chaldea. Ninus is not attested in any of the extensive king lists compiled by the Mesopotamians themselves, nor mentioned in any Mesopotamian literature, and it is possible that this Hellenic creation was inspired by the deeds of one or more real kings of Assyria or Assyro-Babylonian mythology, just like Nimrod. Similarly, the biblical character of Nimrod is not attested anywhere in Assyrian, Babylonian, Akkadian, or Sumerian literature or kings lists, but is believed by many scholars to have been inspired by one or more real kings. What is the truth? Russell Gamirkin is an independent researcher and scholar who has published books and articles and lectured at academic conferences for 20 years. Currently, he is mostly known for his innovative work on the late date and Greek sources of the Hebrew Bible and on the Dead Sea Scrolls. In what follows, you're going to find Nimrod parallels, but also a case made by Russell suggesting that Genesis authors made use of Barosis, putting its final composition in the Hellenistic period. Ninus and Nimrod, Valid Parallels In his thought-provoking book on Barosis and Genesis, Russell Gamirkin delves into the fascinating character of Nimrod and sheds light on the topic of Genesis's composition. Gamirkin's insights are worth considering, and here's a summary of his points, which I find quite enlightening. According to E.A. Spicer's theory, 
There are indeed noteworthy similarities between Ninus and Nimrod. Despite the flaws in Spicer's argument, it becomes evident that the Nimrod story in Genesis incorporates elements from the Ninus legend, as documented by Theseus in his Persica. Theseus, a Greek physician to the Achaemenid King Artaxerxes II, lived in the 5th century BC and wrote extensively with one of his notable works dating around 400 BCE. In these legends, Ninus and Nimrod were both ancient kings of Mesopotamia, ruling over Assyria and Babylonia, and linked to the establishment of Nineveh. Theseus's account described them as hunters. While there are significant similarities, important distinctions exist between the two narratives. In Theseus's version, Ninus is an Assyrian conqueror, and it is Semiramis, an Assyrian queen, who founds Babylon. In contrast, Genesis portrays Nimrod as a Babylonian king who holds authority over both Babylon and Assyria. The Genesis accounts reflect a Babylonian tradition that rejects the Ninus legend and emphasizes Babylon's preeminence. The source of the Nimrod story can be traced to Berossus, who challenged Theseus' depiction of Mesopotamian history. Berossus criticized the notion that the Assyrians founded Babylon, and aimed to rectify misconceptions surrounding Semiramis' reign. Interestingly, the Genesis narrative echoes Berossus' perspective by presenting Nimrod as the founder of Babylon before establishing Nineveh. Berossus' work, The Babylonica, aligns closely with the Nimrod story and its pro-Babylonian standpoint. The accurate depiction of Babylonian and Assyrian cities in the Nimrod accounts aligns with Berossus' expertise in Mesopotamian geography. Consequently, it is plausible that Berossus serves as the source for the Nimrod story in Genesis, which reflects his polemics against the Ninus legend and Theseus' account. To sum it up, Ninus and Nimrod represent competing traditions, aiming to establish the pedigree of Assyria and Babylon. While Ninus is a legendary figure asserting the primacy of Assyria with Nineveh as its initial stronghold, the Genesis account aligns entirely with Berossus by attributing Babylon as the first established city. Berossus, at that time, stood as the lone author supporting this viewpoint. Gamirkin's argument raises the question of whether Genesis directly used Berossus or if they drew from a shared tradition. Who was Gilgamesh? Gilgamesh was a legendary hero in ancient Mesopotamian mythology and the central character of the Epic of Gilgamesh, the epic poem written in Akkadian during the late 2nd millennium BCE, tells the story of his adventures. While Gilgamesh may have been a historical king of Uruk, his status as a deity emerged after his death. He likely ruled in the early dynastic period around 29 to 2350 BCE, but his fame as a legendary figure grew during the third dynasty of Ur. Nimrod and Gilgamesh Gamirkin continues to tackle Nimrod with another clear connection. Nimrod's reputation as a badass hunter in Genesis can't be explained away by dissing Ninus, whose hunting skills are overshadowed by Semiramis. The real inspiration for Nimrod's godlike hunting prowess seems to come from the one and only Gilgamesh, the rock star of Mesopotamian mythology. Like Nimrod, Gilgamesh was a superhero born out of a divine human hookup, just like those giant guys in Genesis 6-4. Gilgamesh's hunting adventures involved taking down wild beasts like the Bull of Heaven and lions, proving he was no pushover. What's intriguing is that Nimrod's kingdom kicked off in Babylon and Erech, the very city ruled by Gilgamesh. 
Another juicy tidbit in the Nimrod story is its close link to the post-flood world. Nimrod, the grandson of Ham in Genesis 10, shares a family tree with Gilgamesh, the king of Uruk in the Gilgamesh epic. According to the Sumerian king list, Gilgamesh takes the throne as the third king of post-flood Uruk, but hold on a minute. There were actually 27 kings of Kish before the kings of Uruk, which makes Gilgamesh the 28th generation after the flood. However, the Uruk Apkalu list suggests a local tradition where Uruk was the first city to rule over Babylonia after the flood, placing Gilgamesh in the third generation. Now, in Barossus' version of the story, Gilgamesh struts his stuff as the third ruler of the post-flood world. But here's the twist. He reigns over Babylon, not Uruk. The flood's over, and the first two rulers according to Barossus were Euxius and Comus Bolus, both sitting on the throne in Babylon. A little fragment from Barossus, tucked away in Elians on animals, spills the beans that Gilgamesh's granddaddy was Sukorus, the king of Babylon. So Gilgamesh, the son of Comos Bolus, snags the title of the third post-flood king of Babylon. The Barossus tale dances pretty close to the Nimrod story, unlike that earlier Sumerian king list. If we embrace Gilgamesh as the blueprint for Nimrod, it seems that Barossus' take on the Gilgamesh saga in Babylon played a starring role in Genesis. While other versions of the story praise Gilgamesh as the ruler of Uruk, Genesis 10.10 puts Uruk on the back burner, giving Babylon the spotlight. It's only in Barossus' version of the Gilgamesh epic that Gilgamesh grabs the title of Babylon's ruler. This means that the Nimrod character in Genesis found his groove from Barossus' account of Gilgamesh's tale, set in the third generation of post-flood Babylon, giving those older cuneiform sources a run for their money. Several parallels between Gilgamesh and Nimrod. Mighty heroes. Both Gilgamesh and Nimrod are depicted as mighty heroes or warriors. Gilgamesh is described as a powerful and fearless warrior in the Epic of Gilgamesh, while Nimrod is portrayed as a mighty hunter in Genesis. Divine Lineage Gilgamesh and Nimrod share a similar divine lineage. Gilgamesh is said to be the product of a union between gods and mortal woman, just like the giants mentioned in Genesis. Nimrod, too, is associated with the giants and is described as a descendant of Ham, one of Noah's sons. Fun fact, Genesis 10.8, in the Septuagint, Nimrod was a titan. Gilgamesh, too, was of surpassing stature. Hunting Abilities Both figures are known for their hunting prowess. Gilgamesh is depicted as a skilled hunter who can track down and slay dangerous creatures, like the Bull of Heaven. Similarly, Nimrod is renowned for his hunting skills and is celebrated as a mighty hunter in Genesis. Founder of Great Cities Gilgamesh is credited with the foundation of the city of Uruk, which becomes a prominent and influential city in Mesopotamia. Nimrod, on the other hand, is associated with the founding of important cities like Babylon and Erech, Uruk. Post-Flood Era Both Gilgamesh and Nimrod are connected to the post-flood world. Gilgamesh is depicted as a king ruling in the aftermath of the flood, and Nimrod is portrayed as a prominent figure in the generation following the deluge. While the answer floats out there somewhere on Nimrod's origins, I personally gravitate towards Gilgamesh as the best antecedent argued by experts in the field. This is not to suggest that parallels between Nimrod and Ninurta or Ninus are not clearly there. 
It seems obvious that a similar competing narrative in the Greek world with Ninus was floating around, and whether Gamirkin is correct that Genesis is literarily dependent on Barosis is really interesting. One thing is for certain, scholars aren't 100% on the same page about which ancient character best explains Nimrod's origins. They are all unanimous that Nimrod is fictive in the biblical narrative. If Dr. David M. Carr is correct, does this mean that the Genesis authors were trying to use Nimrod as their distant ancestor giving them pedigree while in exile or post-exile? I mean, if one can point to a narrative where you claim it was your ancestor who was the original creator of the world's famous cities, does this give them self-gratification as a reaction to the Babylonian myths of old they imitated? Why did Nimrod go down in the halls of shame? Was it a misreading from later authors? Keep in mind, not everyone in history read Nimrod as bad. Here are some other plausible antecedents to the Nimrod stories which have been proposed by scholars throughout history. In Markar, a legendary figure from Sumerian mythology presents intriguing parallels that make him a plausible antecedent to Nimrod in the Nimrod story. Both Inmarkar and Nimrod are depicted as powerful rulers associated with the city of Uruk, known for their ambitious construction projects and their role as builders of cities and temples. Inmarkar, like Nimrod, exemplifies the archetype of a great leader and the founder of civilization, attributed with establishing the foundations of a prosperous society. The similarities in their roles as influential kings and builders, along with their association with the city of Uruk, suggest a potential connection between Inmarkar and Nimrod. Asher, the eponymous founder of the Assyrian Empire, presents a compelling case as a potential antecedent to Nimrod in the Nimrod story. Both Asher and Nimrod are associated with the region of Mesopotamia and hold prominent roles in the establishment of powerful kingdoms. Asher is revered as the progenitor of the Assyrian people and is often depicted as a mighty warrior and conqueror. Similarly, Nimrod is portrayed as a powerful ruler who establishes dominion over Babylon and Assyria. The link between Asher and Nimrod is further strengthened by their shared association with Nineveh, as both figures are connected to the founding or developing of this significant city. Hercules the legendary hero of Greek mythology presents an interesting possibility as an antecedent to the character of Nimrod, especially if you factor in Russell Gamirkin's later dating of the composition of the Pentateuch, the Hebrew Bible. Both Hercules and Nimrod are renowned for their exceptional strength and prowess as mighty warriors and hunters. They are celebrated for their feats of heroism battling formidable creatures and undertaking perilous quests. Additionally, both figures enjoy a significant degree of divine ancestry, with Hercules being the son of Zeus, the king of the gods, and Nimrod being associated with the gods as a mighty hunter. The parallel between Hercules and Nimrod extends to their roles as founders of influential cities or civilizations. Hercules is attributed with the establishment of numerous cities, while Nimrod is connected with the founding of Babylon and Nineveh. The presence of these shared characteristics suggests the possibility of cross-cultural influences or archetypal elements being passed down through different mythological traditions. Sargon of Akkad the legendary ruler of Akkadian Empire in ancient Mesopotamia presents a compelling case as a potential antecedent to the figure of Nimrod. 
Both Sargon and Nimrod are depicted as powerful and influential leaders who played significant roles in the foundation and expansion of their respective kingdoms. Sargon is renowned for his military conquest and the establishment of the first empire in history, while Nimrod is associated with the founding of Babylon and Nineveh, two prominent cities in ancient Mesopotamia. Both figures are depicted as powerful warriors and skilled hunters, highlighting their prowess in combat and their close connection to the natural world. Additionally, Sargon and Nimrod both possess narratives that blur the lines between historical and mythical elements. With legends and embellishments surrounding their lives and accomplishments, the parallels between Sargon and Nimrod suggest the possibility of shared cultural influences or archetypal motifs in the ancient Near East, where stories and legends could be adapted and reimagined over time. And let's not leave out the historical rulers of Mesopotamia, such as the Sumerian kings, Assyrian monarchs, and Babylonian leaders, present intriguing possibilities as antecedents to the legendary figure of Nimrod. These rulers, known for their political power and influence, left a significant mark on the region's history and collective memory. Their accomplishments and conquests, as well as their roles in the foundation and expansion of cities and empires, bear resemblances to the legendary attributes associated with Nimrod. The narratives surrounding these historical rulers often include elements of historic feats, divine connections, and the establishment of prominent cities. It is plausible that over time the historical accounts of these rulers became intertwined with mythical and legendary elements leading to the creation of larger-than-life figures like Nimrod. Other potential connections may lurk in the shadows of the ancient world, and I'm just not aware of those direct antecedents. Please comment if you know any others which make a ton of sense that weren't mentioned in this video. In coming episodes, we want to journey back to the very beginning, addressing the creation of the heavens and earth, with its mythical foundations going all the way back to ancient Mesopotamia. We want to highlight issues between the two Genesis creation myths in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2-3. through we will take a magnifying glass to the creation of Adam and Eve as well. In another segment, we will need to address this Tower of Babel and dive into the Patriarch of Patriarchs, Abraham. I hope that this video was wonderful and you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment telling us what your favorite part of this documentary was. I'm truly interested in seeing what you have to say. If you can do that much, maybe Myth Vision will go down in the Hall of Fame instead of shame as Nimrod. And never forget, we are Myth Vision. <laughs>